without a chair present, uh, we need to appoint a new chair. Support. Support. Any discussion? Still be a great chair. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Not my first time. That's good. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Good? Yep. All right. First, number two, prayer of guidance. Uh, for guidance, and it is Gary today. All right. Shall we pray? Our gracious God, Heavenly Father, we come to you, Lord, this evening now. We're thanking thee as we got to enjoy the beautiful day. We ask for blessings now in this meeting we're about to have to do the township business. And we also ask for safety among for our employees, for our first responders, our firemen, and, and the uh, officers of Ottawa County that guide and protect us in our own township. Continue to be with our schools, our teachers, and all those, the Lord, that are involved with our with our children and our grandchildren. May give them all face standing to that they may guide them in in uh, their education. Be us now, Lord, this night. Bless us in all that we do and say, and return us home at the appointed time, safe from harm and danger. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Thank you. Stand as we <clears throat> the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag. Of, of the United, United States, States of America, America. into the, the republic, republic for which it stands, one, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice for all. All right. Let the records show that Jim and John are not present. Uh, number five, approval of the agenda. Can I get a motion to put the approval agenda on the floor, please? So move. Support. 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 Any discussion? Any changes? Yep. All right, hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All right, on to number six, communications, letters, and reports received. Have a few different meetings in there, as well as uh, zoning, finance, and the, the January 2024 report. Um, now we are on to number seven, which is the first public comment. Uh, this is the one that you can discuss anything that is on our agenda. Uh, you can either pull it up on your phone or you can actually look right over here. If you have anything that you'd like to discuss that is on our agenda for tonight, you're welcome to come on up. Take, you get three minutes. Just uh, say where your uh, name and address. This one is on the agenda. The next one is actually after. You can say whatever you want then. Seeing none, I'm going to close the first public comment on to the consent agenda. So I have a motion to put on the con consent agenda. Please. So we'll Support. Part. I'd actually like to pull an item from the consent agenda under bills. Okay. Is there a specific? Uh, a bill from Bloom Slug at PC. This process would be then to motion for the consent agenda, correct? That re the removal of that? Yes. Oh, we would just add it to would you like the agenda. To have it as a, okay, you would like an agenda item. Where would you like it? Maybe 12B? Perfect. 12B, all right. All right, let's uh, have the consent agenda with the um, pulling of the Bloom Slugget bill. Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. All right. On to number nine, the 2024 Board of Review Appointments. This came out of the Finance Department, or Finance Committee. Um, can I get a motion for uh, Josiah Sammy? Yeah, I move to appoint Josiah Sammy as an alternate to the Board of View um, and remove Jackie Bogoma for a term that goes to 12-31-24. I second that. All right, any discussion on that? This one came, if I remember right, Jackie, what was the, the context of that? Uh, alternate that no longer wants to be the alternate. Okay. Oh. That's what I thought, so. Yeah. Um, any discussion on that? Hearing none, all in favor, all in favor say aye. 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 
All right, on to number 10, the Georgetown Transportation Resolution. That also came out of finance. I have a motion to put that on the floor, please. So moved. Support. Oops. Sorry. Sorry, yeah. No problem. <laughs> um, any discussion on this? You want to fill everyone in on this one? Yeah, this is really a transactional issue where uh, in order for us to get payments, um, all electronic or digital, we need to combine the accounts because the accounts just be separated, Georgetown Senior Center, Transportation, and Township, and this resolution is to put them together just so we can um, uh, easily get uh, reimbursements from the state, whether it's a transportation grant, uh, that would mostly be where this would apply. So it's just an administrative issue of combining those um, accounts into one Michigan account. So it's to our benefit to do that. Say it again. I said it's to our benefit to do that. Yes. Yeah. We have to do it in order to um, get, the money. get the payments correct. Yep. Okay. Any further discussion on this one? Mm -hmm. right, hearing none, this is actually a roll call vote because it is a resolution. Uh, Mrs. Grafman? Yes. Mr. Belding? Yes. Treasurer? Yes. Clerk is yes. Ms. Steele? Yes. All right, five zero. Um, on to number 11, Georgetown Senior Transportation Vehicle Purchase. This came out of services. Can I have a motion to put that on? I'll make a motion to purchase a van from Hookstra Transportation and vehicle outfitting not to exceed 7140413 as recommended by services. Support. Uh, discussion on this. Is this a new purchase? Yeah. Or is it a replacement? It's a replacement for the existing. Okay. So every four years, we replace the vans through the state reimbursement. And we currently have a van in that cycle ready to be replaced, and this is to purchase a new one. And remind me, we make the purchase, and then we get reimbursement from the grant. Correct. So we have to pass the motion so that we can make the expenditure, but when all is said and done, very little, if any, will actually come out of our budget. Right. With this purchase, um, it will probably end up being about $2,000 out of pocket for us right. because we're adding the rear right. ramp. Um, piece, and then we usually sell the used ones for four to five thousand, so it'll be around two thousand cost to us after all said and done. And it's easier for the people to get loaded in and out with the rear Correct. ramp. Yep. Can we cycle those every four years then? Yeah. Okay. How many do we have total? All right. I know I see them around. That's all. Right. I'll get you that answer. I always okay. think it's four. I know we have two of the regular size, one large one. It's three or four. And this one has about 70,000 miles on it currently. All right. So. Any other discussion on this one? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. All right. Uh, number 12, fire truck repair. Uh, this also came out of services. Can I get a motion to put this on the table, please? I'll make a motion to repair the fire truck 832 um, as recommended by services. There was two prices that are being combined. Support. Any discussion on this? This was our fire truck that was involved in an accident. Um, these are the costs to get it repaired. Um, ultimately, we're going to get reimbursed everything except our insurance deductible, so it looks like this is spending about 18000 um, but our deductible is 10, um, so we're going to make the repairs and then get reimbursed. Is this the Allen Springs? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And it covers the Allen Springs, too, right? For yeah. that deductible, yeah. yeah. It also covers the damage at the location. So. Any yep. further discussion? Is, um, is it worth pushing to insurance? Do you look at that? Yes. Is it okay? When you combine it with the damage to the canopy? Yes. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. But I'll just paint Good the building. Good question. Yeah, I love that you're thinking about that, Gary. Thank you. Okay. Have we got an estimate for the building yet? I don't think so. If you haven't heard anything in the building, that's going to be dealt with directly between insurance and Allen Springs, because in the end, it's just 10000 to us. So I'll ask when it, when it comes, but it's pretty much out of our hands. Okay. All right. Hearing none, um, all in 
papers say aye? Aye. aye. All right. On to uh, 12B. Michael, this is your removal of the bloom and slug it bill. I'll let you uh, bring up what you would like. Yeah, I guess uh, I was hoping Jim was going to be here to explain it. Um, but it was my understanding at the December meeting that he said he wrote the resolution of censure. Uh, but we've got a $171 bill, and it says that uh, two resolution samples were provided. So I guess I just wanted to make it clear that $171 of taxpayer money was used for this. And Jim can explain when he gets back. All right. Um, on to number 13, which is the second public comment. This one, you can actually discuss anything you would like. You have three minutes. Can I interrupt really fast? I just want to make sure that, because it seems like that was removed from consent agenda, but then was just an informational item with no action. Um, does our approval of consent agenda then still cover the pain of the bills, or do we need to, since we pulled that one from the bills, take action to pay the bill? We'd probably have to put it back, open up consent again. No, if we can just vote on it to approve. Okay. Yeah, this will just be Single a bill. Moment. Then I would make the motion to pay that bill to Bloom. Okay. I second that. Board. Any discussion on it? Any further discussion? All right, hearing none. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. Uh, on to number 13. Uh, second public comment. Uh, if you have anything you'd like to discuss, you have three minutes. And just come up and you can state your name and then your address. Thank you. My name is Sarah McQuistick, and I am a Republican running for prosecutor here in Ottawa County. Uh, I am endorsed by our current prosecutor, Lee Fisher, our former prosecutor, Ronald France, our current sheriff, Steve Kemker, and our former sheriff, Gary Rosema. I am currently your chief assistant prosecutor, and I am serving my 23rd year as prosecutor here in Ottawa County. A little bit about me personally, um, my husband and I moved here about 21 years ago here to Georgetown Township. So it's nice to actually be speaking in the township that my husband and I chose to move and raise our family and remain for as many years as were given to us. We have two sets of twins that we've raised here in Georgetown Township. Our oldest daughters are 18. They go to Grand Valley and one's planning on nursing and one's planning on going to law school, shocker. And our youngest go to Hudsonville, they're freshmen there at the high school, they're boy and girl. So we have three daughters and one son. Uh, very proud to have them in this community. Uh, this is a community that we've chosen and the community that we're gonna continue to keep choosing to raise our children and to remain for a very long time. Uh, I come from uh, three generations of Army officers. Um, I see that there's a Navy gentleman there my apologies there, but thank you for your service, or love is in service. Um, my grandfather was a World War II vet, my father a Vietnam vet, and my brother graduated top 1% of his class at West Point. Um, I think our veterans are priceless, and it's too rare for our young kids to not be raised around veterans, and we have raised ours around veterans, and we thank people for their service and active duty people as well. So, um, A little bit about prosecutor's office, I'm short on time. We handle speeding tickets all the way up to homicide cases. We have 37 staff that are all dedicated prosecutors. This is what I chose to do back from when I was about 18 years old, and this is what most of our prosecutors chose to do. And we've all dedicated our lives to this public service. It's very important to us. We dedicate ourselves to victim advocacy. We take huge pride in our victim advocacy. We have five of our staff that are focused on advocacy for victims and holding criminals accountable here in Ottawa County to keep us safe and protected. And we have multidisciplinary teams that cover our very youngest in Ottawa County up to our vulnerable adults. Our vulnerable adult population is expanding tremendously, and that's been a personal motivation of mine these last couple years, 
and I brought a multidisciplinary task force here to Ottawa County so we can work with doctors and adult protective services and our law enforcement very closely to make sure that we're doing what we can to protect our vulnerable adults. I love our law enforcement here in Ottawa County. We are truly blessed. We work very closely with them, and I look forward to serving as a prosecutor in this county for many, many years to come, and I would love your support and vote on April, uh, excuse me, August 6th. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone else? Brett? Okay. Thank you. Um, I Glad that Sarah is focused on older adults. That fits right in with me. I'm, that's, that's my life. Um, so, just wanted to touch base with you guys on a couple things, uh, stuff about uh, things going on in Lansing. But one of the things that's going on right here that I'm deeply involved in right now is Rosewood Street. I don't know. I'm sure that you guys have heard that there's been some questions about speed limit and how are we doing things. Uh, so, I've been working with MSP, Michigan State Police. I've been working with uh, the neighbors, uh, Ottawa County Sheriff. I um, actually had the sheriff out here and drove the road the other day uh, talking about what could we do to try and help. Um, with the 40 ends sign, it potentially makes that street a 55 mile an hour street right at the moment, and that is not a good thing. Um, so we're working on some ideas. Several of the ideas that we've got that we might be able to... So first of all, this week... When is it? Thursday? This next... Thursday, Thursday yeah. Thursday, on yeah. the 15th, there is... A, yep. um, there is a presentation that the MSP is going to do just on how they set speed limits. That's going to be here. Um, I've asked the neighbors to be engaged but to not push that really hard. I think because if we get a traffic control order from the from the Michigan State Police, we're going to have to be stuck with whatever that is. We want to not do that right at the moment. Um, so some of the things that the sheriff and I have talked about, he's going to go out and actually talk to some legal folks to see if there's other things that have been done in the past. Um, other places in the state. Um, one of the things that we're looking at uh, doing is <coughs> down the, the ends sign on the 40, that's above the 40 mile an hour right now. Um, MSP, when we had them in a meeting, felt like that would not be a problem to them. Um, let's see. We The other things that we've talked about are yellow and black warning signs because of the hill, because of the curve. How can we potentially sign it so that people actually understand that it should be slower, even if it's not posted that at this point in time, um, until we get to a place where we can do a speed study? And then actually, can we put the speed trailer out there that the, the sheriff has just to, if we can sign it, like at 20 or 30 miles, 25 miles or 35 miles an hour, on the corner hill, that kind of thing. Then if you put a speed trailer there, you'd actually at that same speed, even though it's not posted that it, or ticketable, it would at least be a, an idea of how fast to go just to be able to help the, the area. Um, and then just a couple other things. Redistricting maps are in the process. I'm sure that you guys are aware of that. Uh, would, it will potentially affect seven of the house seats and may even create some of the folks having to run against each other um, down in the Detroit area. Um, let's see, green energy production. Um, I know that you guys are aware that uh, the effort has been made to uh, take away the ability for you guys to, to look at site planning and, and how does that work. Your zoning commission um, really will disappear um, if from that perspective because the, state's, the state is saying they should be able to take that over. Um, that is of huge concern to me because um, it's local control. And if they can do that, then what about mining for stuff that, and what about uh, short-term rentals, and what about, I mean, all of those other things are just one more piece of that, uh, so it's very concerning to me. Um, and then, just in case you hadn't heard, the Auditor General put out a report that said the um, Unemployment Insurance Agency uh, has gave out incorrectly $245 million uh, to people. And they uh, have worked on getting a little bit back, but only about 90 million at this point in time. It's just amazing the, that we lost that kind of money. It just disappeared and was given away. Um, so we we were working with them to try and find out if there's other ways that we can do to, to collect that money back. But I'll yield my time, which I don't have. Thanks. The sad part about that unemployment is that as a business owner, my premiums go up on that. 
I mean, I, I said right away when they paid all the gig workers for unemployment during COVID, it's like, them guys ain't going to pay this back. We are. Right. I run a business with employees. I'm the guy that can pay that. That's what frustrates me about the whole thing. She gave away the money that we put in that account for unemployment, which I have for 44 years now. Right. So that's a dirty deal. Thank you, Brad. Uh -huh. Thank, Thank you. you, Brad. Thanks. Any more? All right, seeing no more, we will close the second public comment. On to number 14, discussion and general information. Any discussions that we would like to have? we we'll start from that side. Yeah, nothing. No? Good. Michael? Good. Nope. I got nothing. All right. Motion to adjourn. So move. So move. Court. All right. All right.